In old British telly, helicopters were big business. Whether it was Noel flying them, Mike Smith crashing them, or their role in the extremely niche helicopter game show genre. With Treasure Hunt, Skyrunners, hosted by Andrew O'Connor, and Interceptor. Like Fort Boyard and Crystal Maze, both Treasure Hunt and Interceptor were adapted from French television, and Interceptor shared Treasure Hunt's production crew, from pilots and iconic run-and-gun cameraman Graham, to its host, Annabelle Croft, who'd replaced Annika Rice in the final series. Interceptor ran for eight episodes in the summer of 89, with a classical theme which rips off Chopin as the perfect soundtrack to running out of a burning museum. It was even released as a single, with a B-side titled Interceptor Boogie. Tennis player turned presenter Annabelle Croft's vibe is the posh new girlfriend in a salt burn setting whose family end up hunting me on their grounds for sport. Today we're in Kent, the Garden of England, and behind me is Leeds Castle, known as the loveliest castle in the world. What's the criteria for that? Her breathless manner makes everything sound like a greeting between two spies on a bench. I understand you're both from Kent. Yes, and the geese are resplendent in their berets. Despite its action-packed premise, Interceptor is extremely middle class, from its market towns and rolling hills to the yuppie contestants. Candy, you seem like an ideal candidate for this programme, because I hear you've climbed up Kilimanjaro in Kenya, is that right? Yes, yeah, the last six hours are the toughest. Really? Yes. And also you've backpacked all around the world. Yes, it was wonderful. I'd recommend it to anybody. I'll get right on that. And do you both know what you'd like to do with the money today, which we're going to win? Well, it could well be a sofa, I think. New sofa. New sofa for your house. Yes. Yeah. How the other half live. Perhaps symbolic of their generational guilt, Candy and Mark are weighed down with equipment. House brick-sized mic packs, headsets, assorted boxes and batteries, plus, on each of their backs, a bulky metal suitcase. How it works is, they're blindfolded, shoved in a chopper, and dropped off about seven miles apart, with the goal of meeting up and unlocking each other's backpacks, one containing £1,000, the other empty, using keys they're searching for along the way, and all while being hunted by the titular Interceptor, for whom a direct hit on the sensors will permanently lock the case. Interceptors played by Scottish actor, model and hunk Sean O'Kane, who viewed the character as a wealthy futuristic viking wreaking havoc on mere mortals for simple sport. His look is decidedly Aryan, stark blonde hair and full black leather ensemble, but the original concept, which never made it on screen, was to stick him under a Darth Vader mask. He's the ultimate aspirational alpha male. Cigar, champers, sports car in the drive and lady in a swimsuit trying to kiss him. Oh, and he's constantly doing this. <coughs> this shrieking bird noise is his catchphrase, often accompanied by the raising of arms like wings, as though miming Karate Kid in a game of charades. Though instinctively omitted when spotting a contestant, the screech has many meanings, functioning as warning, jubilant cry, intimidation tactic, and howl of frustration. It even has a name. Swoop down it! Ah! Pick him up like a fish eagle! Christened the Fish Eagle, its genesis was described by the man himself in a 2002 interview. In my primary school days, I lived in a world of fantasy, and on any given day would lose myself to imagination. E.g., while my classmates played football, I was perched on a wall pretending to be a bird of prey, and would swoop on any ball sent out of play. Steve 
He's armed with a wrist-mounted laser, explained by Croft as an infrared sensor, like a TV remote. Tech acquired from the British Army, I suppose for when they need to turn the barracks telly over to that funny Jim Davidson. They also dub on pew noises for added drama. Best bit is when Annabelle attempts to shuffle just two metal backpacks. Find the money, there she goes, where it stops, nobody knows. It's a waste of time though, as intros were filmed the day before the chase, so they could be switched again anyway. Just like Treasure Hunt, this is essentially a live-action, on-rails RPG, with various plants and cutscenes around the course, waiting to be triggered into action by players. One more thing to tell you, there is transport available to you both, it's up to you to find it, so look out for any tractors, motorbikes, carts, anything like that. Armed with just a compass and map, it's Annabelle's job to guide the pair towards each other. Right, Mark, I'm going to start with you. Well, uh... Well, I'm in the middle of a field. No, no, Can Candy, you... I'm just going to start with Mark. OK, Annabelle. Can you see a pub? A pub? The Intercept is a frightening, omniscient force, like the Eye of Sauron, contestants cacking themselves at the distant approach of his black helicopter. Help! I just heard the Interceptor! Oh. I got somebody. Help! Candy, where are you? Help! The Interceptor's here! Are you all right? I can hear the Interceptor. Yes, he's with me now! Just keep your back away from him! She's screaming. It's all very dramatic, leaping for cover behind walls when he flies overhead, and they really sell you on the threat of 100 mile an hour drive-bys from the sky. Hello, I'm in. coming in low, coming in low. Yes! Oh my god. But this is another of those era's shows where the tech isn't up to the concept and he's virtually got to be touching the pack to register a hit. Bill Cosby's lawyer. I'm fighting my way through the rape. It's up to my neck. It's a maddening watch, with at least three people yelling at all times, either puffed out from running or shouting over helicopter blades and a grown man fish eagling. If I want posh people bellowing at me for 40 minutes, I'll block the bogs in Waitrose again. It looks oh. quite fun. Oh, it looks like about half a mile an orchard. An orchard. I found an orchard. Okay, Candy, you've got to head straight across the orchard down that track. Oh, I can see a helicopter. And when you get to the road, you want to turn left. Which path? Left. If we go near the, the bush, we might not be seen. Everything happening at once. It does at least feel like it's playing out in real time. Though in reality, they didn't strictly keep to the clock and often took breaks in filming. Oh. Yes! Right! Yes, yes, you want to head towards the farm. All right, there's a tractor and a car. Uh, I'm heading there, yeah. OK? Yeah, Hello? perfect. To continue the video game metaphor, Annabelle's the on-screen hint guide, trying to push players in the right direction to the plants so they might offer aid in their quest. There's no boats there Hello? at all. Mark, ask some people around there. Are there any people around? Done needing a speedboat to cross the river. It's just a matter of Mark bothering random members of the public, like a shirtless Derek Acora, until locating the correct NPC. Does anybody own the boat down there? Yes. You own the boat? Oh, brilliant. I don't suppose you could do me a favour and take me across the other side, could you? Well, it would cost you, I should think. Annabelle! How, how do I do it? Just push? Come on, you've got to put this on first. Candy bumps into a milkman, stood ready for her to clamber in the back for a lift, like Cat Slater coming back from a one-night stand. Every vehicle's open-topped, with a lot of flatbeds, to avoid cramming a cameraman in the footwell, and so they can be seen from the air. Thank you very much, Dave, what you've saved my life. Fans of upper-class twitting about, this is the show for you. 
It's okay. No, we've got, we've got a car. I'm washing You've my got feet. a car? Yeah. They can't be any wetter, so... Oh, God, look at Brilliant. this. There's a Right, well, you're, you're going to go through this village. Annabelle, I'm in the most beautiful village! Yes? It's just assumed, correctly, Candy can ride a horse to win her key at a jousting tournament before borrowing a vintage rolls and chauffeur off a couple of poshies having a picnic as the interceptor stalks on foot, Columbine trench coat billowing. <laughs> Your man's got no choice but to steal a white horse from a medieval maiden for an exciting car slash horse chase. He's on a horse! He's pinched a horse! Mark's keys in a beehive, wasting precious minutes strapping him into a beekeeper suit. Or rather... Mark, we've got to get your keys! I'm into a beehive, man! Thing, I don't know what to call it. And I've got to go in with all these bees, there's thousands of them! Oh no, how awful! I am enjoying how the walkie-talkies under his suit give him a lovely pair of Mulligan and O'Hare breasts. Three minutes remaining, interceptor on Mark's tail. It's a mad dash to meet, but for all the shots of him blasting from the sky, the only time he actually hits them is at point blank. I'm in somebody's house! Mark's situational awareness is not great. Okay, the car keys are there. Please, please. The car keys. Where are the car keys? Which car? That's all right Any car. Jesus! Kill! Mark, I'm in a Rolls Royce! Mark, I'm in a Rolls Royce! Window there? She's in a Rolls Royce Coming towards you now. Go onto the road. We'll see him coming down towards you. She's in, we've got to look for a Rolls Royce. She's in a Rolls How did she get into a Rolls Royce? Stop saying Rolls Royce. thrown into chaos by all this fish eagling. They're beaten by the clock, and losing contestants receive the show's equivalent of a blankety-blank checkbook and pen. To remind you of your happy day, it's an Interceptor Adventure Pack. And you've got a lovely map there of Kent, binoculars and compasses for you both. Use them to find the east wing of your house. Me, after your dad shows me his piss collection. That's very pretty. It's all yellow, isn't yes, it? Um... Norfolk's episode starts up on a gas platform, making these videos, rewinding everything constantly. You pick up on all the verbal ticks. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Hello, Hello to both of you. Hello. These two are environmental health officers. I work with Roger, sitting opposite him. And so uh, throw things at each yeah, other. Yeah, that's right. We throw things at each other, keep each other amused. Oh, right. Sounds like a right laugh. What will these poshos do with the winnings? Burn it in front of a homeless? Well, I've just done a sailing course and learned to sail dinghies. I would oh. like to put it towards buying a sailing dinghy. That's a good idea. And what about you? Uh, I'm giving my money to charity. Charity? He doesn't even need it! Right, I shall count you down from five. Them lips be clapping. Come on, let's get these contestants together. Right, now don't for? tell me you're near a blooming windmill because I've got about ten million on my map. Northeast of me, about yes. hundred yards. Go and check out this church. A pub, okay. right? Right. Lots of dikes. I you can't talk like that these days. Lots and lots of dikes all around me. You want to get us both cancelled? Right, listen to me. I will not develop a kink for assertive posh ladies. Now you just watch it. Yes, mistress. I mean, Claire's left bombing for a train which leaves in five minutes, while Roger's startled by a pheasant. And she's going to need to get on the boat and go and chase after that yacht. Here's another thing not to say ever. I just don't want to see that black man. He run faster than I can. For a live chase, moments of actual tension are rare. Like this overhead shot of Roger unknowingly headed right toward the evil interceptor. There they are. Oh God. Come on, my man. Come on, Roger. I can hear him. He's making that silly noise again. 
honestly think Rog ended up with PTSD from this. I'm in a van at the moment. Oh no. Excuse me while I have mine in coronary. But after touching hands and stopping the clock. Please. He's putting the key in. He's putting the key in. Yes! 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 An episode in Scotland puts Commandant Bird Boy against friends Mike and Sarah. Hello, Mike and Sarah. Hi. And what would you like to do if you win the money today? Well, I know what Michael's going to do with his share. He's going to buy me a bike for my birthday. That's very nice. Friends, eh? Bet Mike couldn't sign up fast enough when he heard they had to touch each other to end it. And now for the exciting bit. Now then, neither of you mind being blindfolded, do you? when No Nut November gets too much so you go for a walk. I'm going to have to pull off, there's nowhere to go except for the trees. It's like bleeding World of Warcraft, where the orc will give you a map, but after you've bought him five rat skins, this old farmer's going to give Mike a lift, but only if he helps him feed the sheep first. Mike! Yes, Annabelle! Are you, all right? Are you in the Range Rover? No, I'm, I'm actually helping the man feed his sheep first. He won't give me a lift until I've helped him feed his sheep. Sarah, meanwhile, finds a ride for her and her cameraman. Who's giving you the bikes? Giving you? Oh, we found them. They're just sitting there. That's Mike having to come up with a new birthday present. No, crikey! Like a classic Doctor Who companion, he's left desperately running round a quarry. Yes! Is there anyone who can help? Week after week, Interceptor is a show which fails to live up to its exciting premise. You want a madman firing lasers at Trustafarians like that bit in Apocalypse Now, but you're just watching the privately educated running and being given lifts. I'm just coming up to the home farm now. We're coming up to the home farm and then I've got to run to the river by the sounds of it. It's a strange combination you don't often see, of chaotic and boring. He's on the ground. Is he on the ground, the interceptor? I saw. To Just grab the key. Well, I haven't got it yet. Carry on about uh, 100 yards and then turn left and just keep following the road and that will bring you to the castle. O'Kane's holding it all together every time he appears on screen. A particular highlight is the banter with his pilot, who always calls him Governor, like Nookie and Roger de Corsi. Morning, Governor. It's at its best when it gets silly. While chasing down Claire and Roger, Interceptor just happens upon a lift of his own. Can you give me a lift, pal? Can you give me a lift? I'll pay you handsomely. All right, me man. This plays out with him getting arrested by river police for speeding. Of all the obviously scripted bits, the most blatant and fun is probably the best remembered moment in yet another episode with a pair of bumbling hooray Henrys. Right, I'll just try and get the gardens then. Get to the gardens, Yes, Annabelle. can you see anything around there? Are no, there any people? At the moment, anything? we're still trying to just get through this uh, jungle of rhododendrons. In a race to a farm, Interceptor gets there first and does a deal with the farmer. How you doing here, pal? I need your flat cap, your Nigel Farage body warmer, and your tractor. Now in disguise, when Hillary turns up for a lift, she has no idea who's behind the wheel. Thanks. Yeah, it's the interceptor. You must have allowed him to get me. Okay. Get this woman down there, Ronnie. <laughs> All right, Gov. Just off one bike. Off one bike. Is that on? Is that on? Thank you very much, you're very kind. Just don't ask any questions about why she doesn't spot his cameraman. Hey, what's this chap want? Listen, he's coming towards me! Oh! <laughs> oh my god! What's that chap in the helicopter want? Yes! Go, you 
Nem is is! Also in this, Martin's key is at the top of a fountain, requiring a trip up a 30-foot ladder before scaling slippery wet stone steps. In scenes which make John Noakes' trip up Nelson's column look like your mum clambering into bed to finish her latest Maeve Binchy. Five, four, three, oh, no. two, one. Ow. Interceptor is fondly remembered, but in hindsight, it's only watchable because a man keeps making a stupid noise. Though there's a helicopter, the limitations of the tech reduce it to a game of tag. And basically, this is how the 1% filled their time before they started running Airbnbs. In April of 89, predating the British version by three months, an American pilot aired, hosted by Eric Estrada from Chips, with Interceptor wearing the Darth Vader-style mask dropped from the British series, complete with vocal effects and a POV camera. The pilot wasn't picked up, which is a shame, considering this intriguing quote from its producer, suggesting they may have regularly changed the big man's look. One week, he could be Robocop, the next, G.I. Joe or The Lone Ranger. Now there's an idea crying out for a reboot with contemporary villains. Slender Man, Pennywise, Thanos. Come on Netflix, say the word and we'll have a hedge fund manager named Peregrine being chased over the grounds of a stately home by a man in a tracksuit with a massive cigar. Oh no. Ah. bad luck and we'll see you again next week bye <laughs> <laughs> i like it <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>